Today we are going to embark on an exciting experiment right here in my living room. You see, I've got this Bluetooth speaker, this microphone, and a very cool idea. I am going to create my very own reverb echo chamber, right here, right now. Plus, we are going to compare it to the Universal Audio Capital Chambers reverb, just to see if my homemade reverb sounds better than the plugin. Are you ready? Let's go. So the other day I was working on a new song for one of my projects called Hey Mister. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. But anyway, I was searching for a unique vocal sound. And so I started experimenting with some echo chamber reverb plugins. But then it struck me. I wanted to create my very own echo chamber reverb. But first of all, what is an echo chamber? Essentially, it's a reverberant real space, usually something like a room, which is used to add reverb to any audio signal. And the way it works is that you play your audio into this space using a speaker, and then you capture the sound from that space using at least one microphone. And I say at least one microphone, because you can actually use more than one microphone and place them in different parts of the room. And to set this up, we place the speaker and mic in a way that doesn't let much signal go directly between them. We want the sound waves to bounce up the walls and uh, get all diffused before reaching the mic. Basically, we're trying to capture the natural reverb of the space itself. This new reverb heavy signal is what we call the wet signal. And you can mix it back with the original dry audio to your liking. Just like you would do with the plugin, but we're using a real physical space instead. Typically, you'd connect your speaker and microphone directly into your audio interface then you'd route any signal into the speaker and record it back through the microphone in a new audio channel inside your DAW. But there's a catch. Depending on where your echo chamber is located, you may need really long cables to make it work, or you would just need to move your whole setup. So here's how I'm gonna do it instead. First of all, let's export my vocal track as an audio file and copy it onto my phone. Now I've got here my little Bluetooth speaker that's gonna blast my vocal track throughout the room. I'm gonna plop it right here on this table. Now to record the vocal again, I'll use this microphone hooked up to my video camera. So, Let's place the mic far away from the speaker. Remember, we want as much room sound as possible. Alright, so now we pair up the phone and the Bluetooth speaker, hit record on the camera, play the vocal track, and see how the magic happens. I'm sitting here Right across the place we shared On the sidewalk we smoke Okay, so now back in the studio. First of all, I'd like to hear your initial impressions of the reverb track. Since it's just a regular room and not specifically designed for this purpose, we might need to apply some audio processing to make it usable. What are your thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments below. So here we have our reverb track and I'm going to import it into my session. The first step is to align our audio with the original dry track. Now I want to quickly compare the sound of the Universal Audio plugin Capital Chambers to check what kind of processing I might need to apply to my reverb track. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos like this one. All right, let's compare our audio to the plugin. I'm sitting here Right across the place we share 
Our side will be small to calm down. Trouble comes. Oh, the sun's redone. The first thing I noticed is that the reverb plugin has a more diffused sound. To get closer to that, I would have had to place my microphone farther away from the speaker. Since I didn't do that, I'll use the existing reverb track as it is. The other noticeable difference is the color of the sound. And so to get closer to the sound of the plugin, I applied some processing to my reverb track. Let's take a look at what I did. First of all, I used RX10 for noise reduction, which is perfect for this task. Let's have a listen to how it sounds. I'm sitting here, right across the place we share, on the sidewalk we smoke. Awesome, now we have a much cleaner track. After the noise reduction, I used Soothe 2 plugin to remove some of the harsh resonances in the audio. With this plugin, I can achieve a smoother sound. Let's have a listen. I'm sitting here, right across the place we share, on the sidewalk we smoke. Next, I added the LA2A compressor plugin by Universal Audio, followed by two layers of equalization. With the compressor, I applied a few decibels of reduction to tighten up the sound. The first EQ primarily focuses on removing the low frequencies, set at around 100 Hz, so there's nothing too extreme going on here. And lastly, I added the UAD Neve 1073. Here, I increased the preamp gain significantly to bring out more character in the audio. Then, I slightly lowered the high band and removed 1.6 kHz. Additionally, I added a substantial boost at 60 Hz and compensated by setting the low cut at 50 Hz. Now, let's listen to the final audio. I'm sitting here, right across the place we share. On the sidewalk we smoked To calm down Trouble comes Now let's have a listen to the whole track. Keep in mind, this song is not mixed. You are hearing the raw tracks. I'm sitting here Right across the place we shared On the sidewalk we smoked to calm down, drop out guns, oh, for such freedom, the spade is gone, it's gone, but our shadows defy, my eyes closed, remembering fools, wonder how. The neighbors survive. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Did you prefer the plugin or the real reverb? Feel free to share your opinions. And if you're interested in subscribing to the channel, simply click on the logo above. And here's another video for you to enjoy. See you there.